right, folks, welcome back to another episode of Rob Reacts. Uh, I'm going to be watching uh, a guy called the Black Pegasus. He is a uh, rapper, and he has just started finding some of the music that I grew up with, uh, Outlaw Country, uh, Willie Whalen, Merle Haggard, Charlie Daniels, all, all the, the golden age of country. Back when I was listening to country, I don't listen to much country anymore today, but uh, I want to see what uh, this rapper's take is on some of the all-time greats, in my humble opinion. So, without further ado, today we're going to be watching him review Merle Haggard, Are the Good Times Really Over for Good? This was one of my favorite songs of Merle's, uh, and back in the 80s, man, we were we were feeling it. We were, we were feeling when this song was written. So, let's see what... Uh, Black Peg what is going down, world? Uh, welcome to the 40-year-old FUQ Boys podcast. I go by the name Black Pegasus. And um, a bunch of you guys have been asking me to check out Merle Haggard as I've gone down the uh, Charlie Daniels Band rabbit hole a little bit, the Johnny Cash. And um, this, this is what came up next, Merle Haggard. And, Good dude. Uh, the, name, the name sounds like something like, you know, but I've never heard any of his music. Um, the song that I picked are Are the Good Times Really Over? I Wish a Buck Was Still Silver. And from that first bar, I'm like, that's crazy, man. Like, it me, like it's interesting. Because mm -hmm. when I interpret things, because I'm a rapper, I've been rapping most of my life, toured, blah, blah, blah. But when I interpret these things, you know, I interpret it from almost like a rap, a rap uh, perception. So I'm listening to the lyrics, and he's like, he's coming in. It's country music, right? That's the vibe I'm getting. But he's swinging, man. Like he's swinging at the Fed, bro. You knew, you know what happened when they took us off the gold standard, and that's what he's talking about the, with the silver. That's what I think he's talking about, like taking it back to when, you know, uh, what are they called, commodities or whatever? Well, well, the dollar was backed by, you know, silver and gold. But the gold standard was like lit, lit. Like Nixon really messed up there. Value in your paper money. So I don't know how old this is, but this is, topic comes up now in 2024, especially after them. <laughs> Anyways, let's get it popping, you guys. We're going to get into this. Merle Haggard, like, share, comment, subscribe. 40. 40 year old what? What? Boys are back in town. For your ears. All right, y'all. Let me uh, take down this logo and pull the video up. Don't forget to support the original content on the channel. Um, just released this is a medieval parody of Usher featuring Ludacris. Yes. <laughs> um, check it out if you get a chance. I got some hip hop rap music coming. I mean, it's funny because when I do these reactions, I can't imagine a lot of you guys listen to rap music like that. Right. So which is understandable because I don't listen to country like that. That's why I do the reactions. And it, it, I. All right. Ludacris is a rapper. Is he the one that does move? Bitch, get out the way. Get up. I don't, you don't know. Usher. Who's what's he do? You have a song. Yeah. 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 I don't think they can hear you over there. Nope. I mean, I get that, yeah, yeah. But I'm sure in Cemetery Camp they played Usher. Okay. Okay. I get introduced to. I actually, bro, Charlie Daniels band is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm that like. The Devil Went Down to Georgia is in my playlist. Willie Nelson's uh, uh, "You're Always on My Mind." I don't know what it is about that song. Good. And it's not the Both performance good tunes. on YouTube. It's the recorded one where the ladies in the background doing some of the overdubs fire fire so it's fun discovering new music and getting introduced to stuff i don't expect you guys to love all my stuff but if you can support the original stuff i appreciate it if you want to join cool. up with the crew become a member of the channel links in the description all the stuff i'm working on all the reactions are in the membership he gives, early, he gives good but there's good no reviews your only obligation of the guys. is to like these videos especially because it's free and, and all right let's get a pass if they go Merle check Haggard. the originals out the good times like really that. over I see what he did there from that like old school, I'd guess you'd say like sixties era. No, <laughs> no. maybe fifties. That was the eighties. The old school <laughs> car 
And oh, then that was fast yeah. forward to like what looks like almost like maybe the seventies or eighties. Seventies, eighties, eighties. In the city, and we have issues in our cities in America. That's just what bro. <clears throat> he going crazy, man. <laughs> He's going awful. crazy. You know what's interesting about America? Sometimes you know there's like racial division, right? Like, I, I, y'all see what you know. I don't want to turn this into like a racial division thing, but I want to say something because when I see this imagery, right, a lot of people from the outside, it doesn't matter what community from they're like, how they might question, like, how does this speak to you? Right. And I try to be open because essentially I don't see any imagery that would speak to where I'm from, the things I've seen personally in my upbringing, mm-hmm. okay. you know, the people that I grew up around, right? I don't see anything that looks like that to me from any of this imagery. But the words. But I wanted to say that to also say that this song really connects with me. It really connects with me. So someone from the other side of the tracks, and we'll see. We haven't even gone through the, the same I'm just saying the visual representation of this, like... I don't need to be represented in this to connect with what he's saying. And I think trying to get away from the racial divisiveness, like being real about things that happen, right? Because tribalism is really the core of all this. But getting away from being triggered by certain things, like that, da 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 because I've noticed people get triggered by certain things, but not being able to hear the truth. Everything he said was true. And it actually resonated with me at such a a core level. I'm a little taken back, right? He said he wished, oh, man, I might have to go back and say the lyrics, bro. Like, this is really deep, what he is saying. And it's absolutely true. I wish Coke was still cola, not I wish joint, the joint was, a bad place was still be. a bad place to be. So you guys have to tell me. This is the opposite of outlaw country, or was he a part of that? Because this, like, he was outlaw. So out, from what I understand, outlaw country is like the uh, Hank Williams Jr. type of brothers, right? No, Mar was they in that class. Joints and they just doing their own thing. He's more in my vein. I don't know if you guys knew this, but I've been straight edge my whole life. I s- started smoking weed in the last ten years only to go to sleep, like indica, very specific, like on some like every blue moon. Yeah, this is, uh, it's like a, you know, a cheat meal type of thing. Like, yeah, it helps me sleep really well. But I've been straight edge. I've never been drunk in my life. So a lot of these core values that he's speaking, even though I did some very, I did some things that I'm not proud of in my youth, he's saying some real stuff. You know, and he's going through these time periods. It's kind of speaking to me too because, you know, all of these brothers, even though we might look different, and maybe this was for a different audience, but a lot of people didn't want the Vietnam War. And he mentions it, and we can all agree, like Nixon, like, bro, it's so cool because even, I just feel like this is a come together moment. And I feel like, I don't know how, maybe I misplaced the way I'm saying this because that's what I'm trying to say. What he's saying is true, and we should all come together on a lot of this stuff, right? Our dollar isn't backed by nada. They're printing up money now. Inflation is At crazy. a trillion a this year. Dude's like dang near or prophesizing about what's going on now. Year. I wish a woman could cook versus, you know, use the microwave all the time. Shout out to my wifey because she cooks dinner every night. I love you. <laughs> but that's rare. Good cover, bud. That is rare. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everything he's saying is like hitting a vital nerve. Like I'm talking way more than I'm listening at this point. Anyways, um. Hopefully I didn't misrepresent, you know, like it's weird, man. When you start talking about what I call the truth, like the things you see in trying to not tap dance around scary issues or topics that people are just so scared of. This isn't a we are the world moment, bro. Our world's polarized and it's getting more divisive. And if we don't come together, it's going to fall apart. And people need to realize that and just have a little... um you know, be able to just be able to look beyond yourself, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Anyways, I don't you. know where that came from. I like this song. I'm a very patriotic person, man. Um, 
as a patriotic person who looks the way I look, not trying to make this about that, but it's just interesting because uh, you don't get much representation out there. There's only a few, you know what I mean? Like it's weird and it's polarizing to say you love America and da 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 da, or you're like you're a sellout da 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 da. It's it's really weird because this is the thing too. Like I have a very nuanced position with this too, right? Like what he said about like bro, man, I'm taking off my cap. You know what I mean? I'm standing for the national anthem, right? Like, that's just how I feel, man. I, I My dad was in the Air Force 21 years. I, I live in Colorado Springs, one of the biggest military towns, and um, I've, I've lost friends to these mi- wars in the Middle East when I was young. Like, bro, come on. I'm standing, man. You know? Hey, I'm, I'm, th- this is, if, if you watch this video, um, uh, Mr. Pegasus, if you watch this video, I got to tell you, if you do a little history research, this was written when Ronald Reagan was president. And here's a little bit of tidbit of trivia for you. Uh, When Ronald Reagan was governor of California, uh, he found Merle Haggard was in the penal system there. And Ronald Reagan gave him a pardon. Said anybody that can write music and sing like that needs a second chance and that's how merle haggard uh while was left center center left if you will he wasn't a stone hard republican by any stretch of the imagination but he was a big supporter of ronald reagan just there's a tidbit of trivia for you you know this is my country man i'm in the olympic training center freaking city i'm wearing my flag i'm when I compete, it's for America. You know what I mean? But my nuanced position is, right, America, when people do kneel or do whatever, I'm not as triggered as other people. I might get disappointed, but my whole feeling is, bro, I got to lead by example. Talk to these brothers and sisters. When I say brothers and sisters, I mean any ethnicity. Because I was a leftist growing up. I remember going to a Nuggets game, sitting through the national anthem because I was going through a rebellious phase of my life, and I was very mad about the military-industrial complex and how the uh, service was treating my father. And I didn't know how to separate we the people and being proud American and like having American ideals versus the corruption in the government, how they treat our vets, how the VA treats my father, how the VA treats. It is what it is, right? So I felt some type of way, and I was pissed off, and I thought sitting through the national anthem is showing that I protest these things. Hmm. Um, but in reality, we're standing because I stand. You know, I'm very, I'm very different from my youth. Good. And I say this to challenge people to give people a chance. Absolutely. Because people do grow and change when they see enough things. And I'm one of the, I'm the example of that. So now I try to lead by example because, uh, you know, when I stand, I'm standing for the people I've lost, the people I love and the land that I love. And essentially to take back these things from a corrupt government. So, I mean, you know, some people think I'm crazy. Some people say I'm a sellout. Some people be like, bro, there's no exception. You have to stand. It's like, bro, if we can't have a human conversation, that's just life, man. Humans are humans. We're clumsy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyways, I really taking all the uh, you can't take it aside because that's what he was talking about. And that's what resonated with me. The truth in what he was saying. And, um, you know, he was calling out the war industrial complex. He was calling out the Fed. He was calling out um, society and the way it's moving away from traditional values. And it's true. All Moving away from all these things have not helped the American people. That's the truth. It hasn't helped society. You right. can see it in 2024. I don't know when this came out, but um, great messaging. I really enjoyed that song. Hopefully I'm not too somber. No. I mean, he was spitting a message. Like, I can't yeah. just, I can't just, oh, this is a hot song, baby. Bro, yeah. I got to tell you, I got to keep it a buck on here, man. And that's what I do. And hopefully you guys enjoy that. I did. If not, I did. (laughs) Sayonara. Good job, dude. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one. Merle Haggard, I really enjoyed that. Thank you, brother. Peace. Thank you for being some man. All right. Thanks for that video, dude. I'm I'm glad to see that you had such a positive reaction to this song.
it just seems to me back in, you look at Merle Haggard's catalog, and I mean, that's back when country songs actually told a story that meant something. Uh, same thing with Willie Nelson, same thing with Waylon Jennings. All those songs had great messages. And yeah, it may not be the genre you're used to listening to, like, my son, he listens to a genre completely different than I'm used to listening to. He doesn't want to hear my stuff. I, I don't know. There's There's been a couple of songs that I introduced him to that, that he kind of had a reaction like this. He, he liked the songs. He liked the beats. And, you know, he liked the message it was putting out. So, you know, there's hope. There's hope. He'll, he'll come around to it eventually someday. Uh, look, folks. Please, please, please do me a favor and go check out uh, Black Pegasus. Uh, the links are going to be in the description. And hey, if you haven't hit that subscribe button here, now's your chance. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And while you're down there, go ahead and click the like button. And if you would, if, if, if you like this type of content, if you like me reviewing his stuff, let me know in the comments and I'll come back and review some more of his stuff. Because he's reviewed Charlie Daniels. He's reviewed some Waylon stuff. He's reviewed uh, country music, some of the music back from my day. And I, I really like seeing what his perspective is of that. So thanks for watching. Y'all come back again next time. Oh, yeah, hit that notification while you're down there hitting the subscribe and everything. Y'all have a great week. And uh, hopefully we'll see you now that Ryan's back from his international cruising Hopefully we'll have another video out a little bit sooner than the last one that we put out. Y'all have a great day. Take care.